the Favor Union Hall Effect joysticks have arrived. Was right around $17 for 10 pieces, so pretty cheap. I will put a link in the description for where I ordered them from. They do stand out with that bright green sensor housing. Also, the shape of the sensor housing is different from the Genful and K-Silver. So it might be something interesting in taking a look at these. Well, let me get it apart and see what we have here. Sensor housing clips off like all the others, a tab on each side. The magnet holder is a bit different. It has clips that snap in the hole of the sensor housing. That is a lot different. Magnets appear to be a little shorter and a little taller than the rectangular magnets in the Genful and K-Silver. Now that looks like the same shaft that is on the Favor Union potentiometer joysticks. I'll have to check that out and make sure. Here's a close-up of the inside of the sensor. Extremely hard to read the writing on the IC. Looks like LG3D with the D being a lowercase letter. Looks more like a marking ID than a part number. Two capacitors mounted right beside the IC and that looks to be it. A close up of the outside of the sensor housing. The Favor Union logo at the top. And it does look to be a single sided PC board in this sensor. This sensor does look cheaper than either the Genful or the K-Silver. PC board is a bit larger in this one. Of course, it wouldn't surprise me if the magnet was the most expensive single item of the entire joystick. On the left is a Favor Union 2.3K ohm potentiometer joystick, which is one of the two types of joystick Sony uses in the DualSense controllers. The joystick frames look identical. The movement of the joysticks feels identical as well. The magnet holder from the Hall Effect joystick fits on the potentiometer joystick frame just fine. I can't tell any difference in the shafts. Sensor housing snaps right on. It looks like it would be possible to switch these to the hall sensors without removing the entire joystick. Just remove the potentiometers and install the hall sensors. Nice that Favor Union didn't alter their joystick mechanical parts. Probably cheaper for them as well. Of course, if your controller has ALPS joysticks, we'll have to replace the entire joystick. ALPS and Favor Union potentiometers are not interchangeable. I do all my testing before I install the joysticks into a controller, so this video is kind of out of order, but I'm sure this is the part that most people are interested in. How well does it work in a controller? Here is what the controller looks like before I've replaced the joysticks. The left is a K-Silver Hall Effect joystick, but it was installed before the calibration software was used, so it was mechanically center adjusted. That is why the circularity is skewed to the down direction. The right joystick is an ALPS potentiometer joystick. It works fine, but I'm going to replace it as well. This time I didn't pull a random joystick from the bag to use. I checked all 10 joysticks. Two of the 10 were just about perfect. Two had one of their axes off-center by 50 millivolts or more. The rest were within 20 to 50 millivolts of center. So I took the two I'm going to put in this controller from the six, let's say average joysticks. Not the best and not the worst of the lot. This is a BDM-020 controller, so it's got a few years on it. And now with these new Hall Effect joysticks, may get a few more years out of it. You do want to make sure the joystick is flush with the PC board when soldering it in place. All the work of picking out a nice and center joystick will be lost if it's not mounted straight in the PC board. I usually solder two opposite joystick frame pins first, then I very closely look over how well the joystick is mounted. If a side is not flush, at that point, it's easy to heat up one of the frame pins and push the joystick into position. Then when I'm happy the joystick is seated properly, I solder the rest of the pins. Now before I reinstall the board back into the controller housing, I hook up the battery and do a quick test. I open up the Gamepad Tester website and make sure all the axes are working. Then I'll do a temporary calibration. Main point of this is to see what the circularity looks like. The left joystick is better than I was expecting from my testing. The right joystick is more about what I was expecting. Once mounted in the controller, this will improve. This just tells me I don't have anything horribly wrong at this point. So it's time to put the controller back together. It's all back together and I've done a permanent calibration. Again, permanent is not a good description. 
It's a calibration that has written the values to the non-volatile memory in the controller. It can be calibrated over and over again. Of course, the centering is just fine. It's hard for it not to be now with the calibration software. It's the circularity that is of concern at this point. After I did my testing of the sensors for this joystick, this is what I expected. The error rate is a bit better than I was expecting. I guess they are a bit more linear than I thought. Can see that at all these positions, the output from the controller is not reaching the value it should. If right reads 1 on axis 0, and down reads 1 on axis 1, then the down right corner should read 0.7 or maybe 0.71 on both axes, and it's a little short. It's not off by much, hence the low average error. And as for feel, these feel like potentiometer joysticks. There is no extra smoothness to them. I would not be able to tell the difference picking up this controller and using it compared to a controller with potentiometer joysticks. I really was not expecting these Favor Union Hall Effect joysticks to be as good as they are. Maybe they need a bit more work on their part dealing with linearity, but they're close. If the joystick position not reaching the full circle bothers you, there is a sort of easy modification to help with that. It will introduce a bit of over travel, it's just a matter of trade offs. I'm wrapping some tape around the joystick knob, the part of the knob that hits the controller shell, the part that limits the thumb knob movement. Can use tape, can use a thin rubber band. The rubber band is easier to install, but you have to be more even with the pressure on the thumb knob when calibrating. The idea is to limit the movement of the thumb knob for calibration. This is pretty thin tape, but I'm having a hard time getting it to lay flat, so I'm going to stop at five turns. Move it around a bit to mash the tape in. Not sure if it's going to be enough or not, it's just trial and error. Now to do a range calibration. No need to do a center calibration, we are not affecting the center position at all. Now that it's calibrated, I'll pull the tape off. It was a permanent calibration because there is no redoing it once the tape is removed. And let's see how it looks now. If I would have laid down the tape in a more even process, I think the error would have been lower. It bunched up a bit on the right side of the knob. Five or six layers laid flat would have done a good job. At the left, right, up, and down, it does hit maximum output before the stick hits the mechanical limit, but just by a tiny amount. Well, by the thickness of the tape I put on the knob. Lower right is a bit over range. Upper left is very, very close. All of it looks to be at or over the circle area, so I got what I was shooting for. If we compare this to the pre-tape calibration, quite a bit of difference. There is also a notable difference in the right stick. I was not really focused on moving the right stick, so probably had almost no pressure on it when moving it for calibration. This is something else to keep in mind when calibrating the range. Pressure does make a difference. It's all thin plastic and it does bend to some extent. So if you're not happy with the range, try redoing the calibration with more or less pressure and see what you get. Even more or less rotations will make a difference at the margins. Now to test the response of the Hall Effect sensor. The mechanical parts of this joystick seem to be identical to the Favor Union potentiometer joysticks. So what will make or break these are the Hall sensor and the magnet. I'll get my extension lead sorted onto the sensor pins. Then to get the sensor positioned at the end of the electromagnet. Still the hardest part of using this setup. The Hall sensor is supplied 1.8 volts. And the signal from the Hall sensor is connected to the scope channel 2, the green trace. The current through the electromagnet is displayed on channel 1 of the scope, the yellow trace. When I push the button, the electromagnet is energized for 200 milliseconds. Then the polarity is switched and energized for another 200 milliseconds, or close to 200 milliseconds. I can switch the starting polarity. That way you can test the rise and fall times of the sensor. Here is the fall time test for the sensor. For the first 190 milliseconds, the electromagnet supplies a south pole magnetic field to the sensor. And for the final 190 milliseconds, it supplies a north pole magnetic field to the sensor. Channel 1 is showing the current through the electromagnet. There are about 2 milliamps per millivolt. Really the only important part of the electromagnet current waveform is the transition time from one polarity to the next. The Hall sensor signal on channel 2 is a lot different than all the other sensors I've tested. The amount of magnetic field has been enough to almost saturate the output of all the other Hall sensors. Here, I'm not even getting close. 
I'm at 300 millivolts, a division for the Hall signal. And with no magnetic field, the output of the Hall sensor is around 920 millivolts. It doesn't even look like this amount of magnetic field is moving at 300 millivolts. Now this amount of magnetic field would move all the other sensors 90 to 100 percent of their range. For this sensor, it's maybe 30 percent. I think I see now the reason for the shorter and taller magnet. Taller to have more magnet, hence stronger. Shorter so that the ends of the magnet get closer to the center of the Hall sensor. But I do wonder what that will do for linearity. Now to take a look at the fall time. I'm going to let the scope measure the rise and fall times. It's just much more consistent than me and the cursors. And it's faster. The rise and fall time reference points are set to 10% and 90%. Let me expand the horizontal time base because these are looking fast. So I've got a reading of 1 millisecond for the fall time. Now this is only one third of the total range of the sensor, but I know it takes 1.7 milliseconds for my electromagnet to change polarities. So what is so impressive is the Hall sensor output is almost mirroring the current through the electromagnet. That is the best fall response I've seen from any of the joystick sensors. Let me see if I can get an idea of delay time. It's fast. From the start of polarity change till sensor output change, under 40 microseconds, probably closer to 30 microseconds. That's impressive. I'm definitely going to have to build a better electromagnet. This one just isn't fast enough to really get an accurate reading of the timings here. To test the rise time, the polarity of the electromagnet has been set to provide a south pole magnetic field at the start and then switch to a north pole magnetic field. I'll expand the horizontal time base to get a closer look. Looks like a reading of about one millisecond, just like the fall time. I would expect most of this time is the time it takes for my magnetic field to change. The signal is following right along with the magnetic field. So with this setup, I can't tell how fast the rise and fall times are. Only that they are faster than 1.7 milliseconds. These are very fast sensors, at least compared to the other joystick hall sensors I've tested. Delay time from the high to low change looks to be a bit longer, somewhere between 40 and 50 microseconds. So maybe a 10 microsecond longer delay? Meaningless at this time scale. Response time is not going to be an issue with these sensors, I'm sure of that. Most of the Hall Effect joysticks I've tested will reach maximum or minimum voltage well before they reach the mechanical limit. These don't. They are for the most part hitting the minimum or maximum signal output at the mechanical limit. And that may sound like a good thing, but there is a problem with that. When moved to the corner position, the output voltage is short of what it should be. Minimum is too high and maximum is too low. I'm quite sure that is going to result in circularity problems, mainly not reaching the circle perimeter at the corners. I don't think it will be horrible, but it wouldn't surprise me to see error rates of 10% or so. Still, these are so fast and the signal output just doesn't look that noisy. I think I'm going to pick a controller and stick a couple of these in it. I don't think I will be able to tell a difference between these and a potentiometer joystick. These are the fastest Hall Effect joysticks I've tested so far. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to improve my test setup just to see how fast they are. As for feel, I still like the way the Genful V5 joysticks feel. That tiny bit of smoothness, I really like that. But I do know that smoothness comes at the price of a slight delay in the sensor output. For range circularity, hands down the Genful V5. It's as good or better than a potentiometer joystick. I think they have their magnet plus sensor linearity down pat. Before I tested these, if someone wanted the fastest response time, I would have told them just to install a potentiometer based joystick. In fact, I have. But now I think these are the choice for someone that wants a Hall Effect joystick and also wants a fast response time. A hundred microsecond delay is just not going to matter in a world where tens of milliseconds is fast. And the Hall Advantage of Nowhere is just too powerful not to consider these as a potentiometer joystick replacement. May have to do a bit of extra work in the calibration process to get the range where you want it. But that's not really hard, just takes a bit of time. These do seem to be very new from Favor Union. With a bit of magnet design and our linearity work on the sensor, they could solve the range circularity issue. At the same time, Genful could speed up their sensors a bit and it be the perfect Hall Effect joystick. At least there is a choice. These for speed, the Gen 4 V5 for smoothness and range. I guess wanting perfection in a $2 part is asking a bit much, but it never hurts to ask. Thank you for watching.